Well, hello there, church family and all our beloved friends. It's uh, good to get together with you, and uh, thanks for coming over to the house. So we're having our church service, huh, Jeannie? It's just Jeannie and I here, and uh, she's the usher, and uh, she also takes up the tithe and uh, cleans up afterwards and all that good kind of stuff. But uh, how about if we pray and then worship together? Um, Father... It's so good to be able to come before you in Jesus' name and to come before you in unity with all my brothers and sisters, Lord, with the uh, online church that you've given to us, to each of us, Lord. I pray that blessings would go out. I pray, Heavenly Father, that everybody be willing to jump in with the worship tonight for I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. As you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 come on you're a good good father to you are to you are to you are and I'm troubles we all got troubles <laughs> the whole world's got troubles let's take them to the Lord leave it there leave it there just take your burden to the Lord oh and leave it there if you trust him through your doubt 
will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there. If the world from you withholds of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in His word how He feels. The little birds take your burden to the Lord, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Just take your burden to the Lord, oh, and leave it there. If you trust Him through your doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there. If your body suffers pain, and your health you can't regain, and your soul is slowly sinking in despair, Jesus knows the pain you feel, He can save and He can heal. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, just take your burden to the Lord, oh and leave it there, if you trust Him through your doubt, He will surely bring you out, take your burden to the Lord. When your enemy assails and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven answers prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there. Come on. Trust him through your doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there. If you trust him through your doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord, leave it there. We do want to bring our burdens to you, Lord. We lift up before your families, Lord. Each one of us, our families. A lot of us are sitting in homes right now or wherever we may be. And I pray, Father, for our families, that you would keep us safe, that you would protect us from the evil one, that you'd protect us from this uh, virus, Lord. But no matter what, Father, we will praise your name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in a desert place, or I walk through the wilderness. Blessed. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to peace. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, when the sun's shining down on me, when 
And the world's all as it should be Bless it be your name Bless it be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Bless it be your name Every blessing Pour out how turn back to me When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, glorious name, glorious name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It's always good to worship. It's always good to set our spirits free to connect with the Lord. I know that in my life. Sometimes when things are worst and things are the darkest and most troubling time, worship. And uh, you'll find your soul being set free. In fact, we all know, hopefully, that the Word of God says that He inhabits the praises of His saints. So right there in the middle of... Oh, did you see this? <laughs> Can I show this off? <laughs> okay, here's a picture of Jeannie and I when we got married. Amazing. We look exactly the same. <laughs> not. Anyway, that's us right there. I don't want to knock this over. My wife's as pretty as ever. Okay, let's see. Uh, off. Uh, we have uh, announcements, right? Announcements are everything's on hold and that's just the way it seems to go. For us, I'm sure that's for you too. In fact, I'm sure it's for the whole world. Uh, we're just on hold. Now, uh, I think that uh, everything that I, you know, am able to line up, it seems like we're doing a good job in the country, and I certainly appreciate uh, the medical professionals when they speak and able to understand what they're saying, and they get that across real nice. I think there's a great team there uh, in Washington trying to help us out. So I'm very thankful for that. I know that California's been hit hard and New York's been hit really hard. And so, Lord, have mercy on us. That's what I have to say. Um, the one thing that I hope is not on hold is uh, Easter sunrise service. Now, um, our sunrise service uh, is scheduled to be outside, outdoors, uh, if this, if it works, if the band is kind of lifted, then we'll have chairs six feet apart and we'll just be spread out across the church parking lot. Uh, but we'll also be doing it live. Or everybody can just stay home and we'll continue to have church online. But I love you guys. I miss you guys. I, I, I'm picturing in my mind where everybody sits. Yep, there they are. Everybody sitting there. Sound room, ushers. This is beautiful. Also, I'm looking forward to having communion again. And I know that that's on hold. And you know how valuable communion is to us and how much it means to me. At any rate, I think that's about it, right? Okay, let's get to the word for tonight then. Tonight, again, uh, we're running a little bit of a pause as well through the books that we're going through. You know, I like to go through every book of the Bible. I like to go through every chapter of the Bible. I like to go through every... Uh, 
verse by verse. I just love that. But we're taking a little bit of a break from that, and I hope you'll allow me to do that. Tonight we're going to be in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, and I'm calling this teaching the God of all comfort. <clears throat> so, uh, Father, be with us. Encourage our hearts as we study your word. Uh, open up our minds and our hearts. Father, I give you my mind and my heart and my mouth and my lips, and I pray that they would be used for your glory. All right, uh, I'm sure we're all aware that there are plenty of uh, titles in the Bible for God. Um, the titles that God has given in the scriptures speak of his provision for us, his titles speak of his love for us, his healing of us, that he is the creator of all things, that he is light holy, merciful, grace-giving, that he's the good shepherd, and on and on we could go. I know you're familiar with them. And one of my very favorite titles for God is the God of all comfort. And that's what Paul the Apostle calls God in First Corinthians, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 1. Now, uh, yes, he's our rock, and yes, he's mighty, and yes, he is our shield. But today I'm just totally drawn to his comfort. And I think we're going to find some uh, pretty dynamic principles. Actually, just two. This is a very simple message. Um, now, many of us have known for a long time, and there are many of us that perhaps are just finding out that life is difficult. Yes, especially in the situation we're in, we're finding life is difficult. The Bible declares people are born for trouble as predictably as sparks fly upward from a fire. <laughs> so do sparks fly upward from a fire? Yes, absolutely they do. And uh, people are born for trouble. That is the truth. How many of you know that your faith is going to be tested? How many of you know that uh, our faith is being tested, even right now? Uh, you desire to follow after God? Uh, and when you do that, your faith may absolutely be run through the ringer. Doing what's right, doing what's true, does not necessarily mean it's going to be fun and easy. Sometimes it's exactly the opposite of that. But have you noticed that in this time out for the world, the whole world's in time out right now, that folks are more willing to hear what God has to say, even just the little contacts that we have. Amazon guy dropping something off, us texting people, even some people that we haven't heard from or talked to for many years. We're now reaching out and contacting people. People are more willing to hear about who God is right now. And folks are more receptive to hearing me, to hearing you say, you are loved. You're loved by me and you're loved by God. People are more receptive to hearing can I pray for you? As a matter of fact, can I pray for you right now? People are ready to hear that. And in sharing such, we are absolutely pleasing the Father and we are absolutely bringing Christ into the crisis. Don't you like that? I love it. A favorite verse of scripture of mine, one that is very comforting, one that I absolutely needed today, and I'm hoping it'll bless you as well. It's found in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. See, I even needed that right now. <laughs> Anybody else need that verse? I came across a funny little poem. I hope you don't mind if I share this, but it fits in so well that I couldn't pass it up. Here it is. Maybe you can relate. A little brown cork fell into the path of a whale who lashed it down with his mighty tail. But in spite of its blows, it quickly arose and floated serenely before his nose. <laughs> Said the cork to the whale, you may flap and sputter and frown, but you can never keep me down. For I am made of the stuff that is buoyant enough to float instead of to drown. 
<laughs> Isn't that great? I mean, that says exactly uh, what this message kind of is built around. We're made of the stuff that is buoyant enough to float instead of to drown. I really like that. Ever felt like, ever felt like that little cork and that the world around you is like the whale tail? Well, please follow along now as I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm just going to read verses 2 through 4. Paul the Apostle writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The word of the Lord. I know that I have shared this before, but many years ago, I heard Pastor Chuck Smith on Pastor's Perspective, and the caller called in and she sounded troubled. And she asked Chuck the question, are there any people in the Bible who get down and depressed? There was a pause. Chuck comes on with an answer that is a classic. And he said to her, you should ask, are there any people in the Bible who don't get down and depressed? Because <laughs> that's very true. Life will throw us unexpected curveballs, sometimes one right after another. Life can be filled, filled up to the brim with hurts, with disappointments, with pain, with sorrow, with struggle, with depressions, with delusion, disillusionments, and even despair. Did I leave anything out? I don't think so. And oh, could you uh, pass some hand sanitizer, please? Let's... Let's, let's, okay, thank you, Ginger. Let's do this right, shall we? I'm being an example here. Uh, so, what are we to do <laughs> with our difficult times? What are we to do in these difficult times? How do we stay afloat in these difficult times? And I think for the believer, as, as important as that is, how do we help keep others afloat during these difficult times. And that brings us to our walk in the word uh, for today. Now, let me say a couple things about the book of 2 Corinthians, which is a favorite of mine. And of course, I know you know, they're all favorites of mine. I have 66 favorite books in the Bible. <laughs> but 2 Corinthians is different. It's different because it's one of the most, I believe, emotional and one of the most personal books uh, in the New Testament. It has been called Open Heart Surgery on the Soul of the Apostle Paul. How's that for heavy? This book teaches us, it, it, like I'll, I'll use as an example the book of Romans. So this book, as compared to Romans, teaches us not by reasoned arguments. This book teaches us not by doctrinal statements, but this book teaches us by example and personal illustrations, and that makes it very powerful. To me, this letter is like the Apostle Paul has signed up to be our big brother in a spiritual mentoring program. That's what I think about this book. So in verse 2, right off the bang, he starts off with, Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul uses a interesting, uh, very common Greek greeting. So the Greeks would say to each other as they pass by, you know, we say hello, they say uh, charis, and that's what grace is, charis, that's the same word. And charis, if you were to translate it with somebody just saying charis to you, that would mean I hope you have a better day than you deserve. <laughs> That's what I hope that I have. That's what I hope that you're having today. And he takes that word charis and he combines it with the customary Jewish greeting. You know what the customary Jewish greeting is? That's right. Shalom. Shalom, all my friends. So Paul the Apostle, 
almost like makes a new word by slamming those two together and by saying grace and peace he goes karas shalom karas shalom to you that's just so beautiful so uh considering that that the greeting to me and that the greeting to you this evening is karas shalom and i think to myself how rich we are in jesus how how rich we are no matter what happens in this world, how rich we are in Jesus, how freely God gives to us his grace, how freely he gives to us his peace. It's beautiful and forgiveness of sins. And uh, somebody has written, God can work peace through us only if he has worked peace in us. Those who are in the best of circumstances, but without God, can never find his peace. But those in the worst of circumstances, but with God, need never lack peace. I think that's tremendous. Now, verse 3 is just what the doctor ordered. Here we go. Verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies, the God of all comfort, Surprisingly here, if you've caught it, the Apostle Paul jumps into this with a rejoicing in God. You see, blessed be could also be translated praises be to God. So let me ask you, let me ask you. When you smash your thumb with a hammer or find out that you're out of a job, or the world is fighting a pandemic, do you begin the story with, blessed be God? That's what Paul the Apostle is doing here. And as I read that and understand it and take it in, I'm thinking to myself here, the Paul the Apostle is sharing something that he knows that we may not know. That he has a cat that he wants to let out of the bag, so to speak. That he has a spiritual truth that will comfort us and others. So he praises, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the blessings that we have, all the blessings that we have, and, and I pray that you're sitting at home with a full refrigerator and every other supply that you need to stay hunkered down for as long as we have to be hunkered down. But all the blessings that come our way, the roof over our house, blessed friends that we have and peace and the mercy of God. Those all come to us by way of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, who freely gave his life for us. He is the doorway to heaven. On account of Jesus, we can know personally the Father of mercies. By the way, uh, by way of definition, mercy is not getting what you deserve. I think you may know that. That's when you cry out for mercy. Don't give me what I deserve. In fact, I want to encourage you right now never to pray this. God, give me what I deserve. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't ever pray that. It is the mercies of God that keep us from what we actually deserve. And through Jesus, all judgment is taken away. God, in Christ, took our sins and nailed them to the cross. And then this beautiful title and truth that God is the God of all comfort. Anybody like to be comforted? Anybody like to be comforted, especially by God? I do. It's a title, and it's a glorious title for God. Um, ah, but you see, here's the kicker now. I won't actually know, and by know I mean to experience, I won't actually be able to know and experience that God is the God of all comfort for me personally, for you personally and practically, unless you're ready to take to him all your troubles. That's when he becomes the God of all comfort, when you take to him all your troubles. It's kind of like saying the post office delivers letters. But if I just sit on my letters, they'll never get delivered. So the post office does that. And it's the same way with the Lord. He's the God of all comforts, God of all comfort. But I have to take to him my troubles. 
with God to experience him in that way, I need to go to him. I can't, I can't think of anything more important than that. You know, as we uh, went through our study through the book of Isaiah, over and over again, we would hear God say that he's calling out to people. And when we get towards the end of the book of Isaiah, God says, I'm calling out, but nobody's answering. I'm calling out, but nobody's listening. God is calling out. Don't, don't make it just this general calling out. He's calling out to you specifically. He's calling out to me. This is a defining moment. Things will be different after this. Things will change. And God is calling out to you and to me right now to come into his presence with every trouble, every concern, every worry, every trial. What's going to happen next? I can bring that to God. And as I seek him with all my heart, as I am diligent in my prayers through Christ Jesus, then I have a meeting with God. And in that personal place in my heart, I meet his comfort. Simply stated, how can I know God's comfort unless I take to him my troubles? I noted something else interesting at the start of 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, there are five different Greek words that are used to, uh, that are translated as troubles or trials or, you know, hurts or five different words are used for troubles. But in the start of this book, one word is used five times. And that one word that's used five times at the start of this book is the word comfort. Now, that word comfort is the word parakletus. Who knows what the word parakletus means? Uh, you might want to, <laughs> I know you know, you might want to type that in right now so that we all know, but, uh, that word parakletus is used so often as a direct reference to the Holy Spirit. One who comes alongside to help and strengthen. How did I do? Is that good? Okay. <laughs> Isn't that great? So the God of all comfort means I'm not alone. The God of all comfort means he is with me no matter what. The comfort of God and the God of all comfort is more than a match for the troubles we face. Where's your faith on that one? Let me say it again. That the comfort of God and the God of all comfort is more than a match for the troubles we face. Now, right away, some folks may say, or you, some folks may be thinking, well, you don't know what troubles I've faced in my life. Or you don't know what troubles that I'm facing right now in the middle of this crisis. Or maybe you don't know the troubles I faced when I was young. Or maybe you don't know the troubles I faced when I was on my job or in my marriage or with my health. But I do know this. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? You see, the same God who created all things, the same God who was with Daniel in the lion's den, the same God that was with Joseph in the pit, the same God that was with David and all of his trials, the same God who healed the sick, raised the dead, forgives sins, and is coming again. That same God bids you and bids me to come to him with our trials, with our troubles, so that we'll be comforted by him and we'll find out that we are never alone. Let me read to you uh, verse 4, and this is from the New Living Translation. It reads, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. I think I'm thinking of J. Vernon McGee. Any J. Vernon McGee fans out there? J. Vernon McGee might say at this point, my beloved, 
This is where the rubber meets the road. What I'm saying is this right here for us brings God's purposes into this pandemic. That's what we need as believers. That's what we need as we step forward in faith. We need God's purposes in this pandemic. Let me explain. When I'm in a world of hurt, and by the way, the whole world is literally in a world of hurt. So when I'm in a world of hurt or when you're in a world of hurt, we take those hurts to God through Jesus and he fills up our comfort tank. So I'm struggling in some way and I go to, do you do this? I do this. You have kind of a, yeah. Uh, kind of do this thing where I have a readout with God every night, you know. It's just me, and I'm laying in bed. It's usually right before I fall asleep, and I kind of do a recap with God. I don't know if you've ever done that. I seem to be doing it a lot more lately. And it's kind of like, goes kind of like this. Lord, how do we do today? <laughs> or how did I do? You did great, Lord, but how did I do? And what, what things could I do better? And what things would you forgive me for? And I kind of have this recap with God. And it, no matter what I bring to him, I find in that moment the comfort of God. Oh, Lord, you still love me. Oh, Lord, you still forgive me. You are the God of all comfort. I'm going to rest tonight in you. And wake up, Lord. We'll try it again. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes for me at nighttime. So I bring that trouble that day, those concerns, and I bring them to God like a car driving into a gas station. And I find that my comfort tank is empty. And I ask God as I give him all this, as I seek him, as I pray diligently, he puts in uh, the comfort fuel that I need. And when I have that comfort fuel, and I got to go first to him and get it. Then God gives me enough that I can share with others. That's how that works. That's what's going on here. Through prayers and through giving and through text and through social media, I spread around and I pour out the comfort that I've already been given. Jeannie does that every day. She has a, a, a scripture texting ministry, right? <laughs> Do you call it something or just Jeannie's? Okay. Jeannie's favorite, favorite verse for the day. And she texts it out to people. If you're not on that list and you want to be on that list, contact Jeannie and she'll add you where you get a text scripture from her every day. It's just, then that's the same thing. She goes to the Lord, she gets filled up with comfort, and then she spreads the comfort around. And whether it's texting or or social media of some kind, or a phone call, or whatever it may be, like right here, right now, from me to you, uh, I begin to express how God has comforted me. I, I don't know what I would do without the Lord. Like the big question that I have for the world, what do people do without God? I, I have no clue. How, how sad, how lonely that must be. Look, the only... and. The only real love that I've found, or the best love, or however you want to put it, is from God. The real peace in life is from God. The real joy in life comes from God. We may run around and we may try a lot of different things, but I'm here to tell you that there's nothing that compares with the beauty of your own personal connection with God through Jesus Christ. That's his plan. The God has a deep, deep well of comfort. And not only do you pull from that well of comfort, but now you can lead others to that same well of comfort. Bible commentator Clark, I always appreciate him. He wrote the following. Uh, Even spiritual comforts are not given us for our use alone. They, like all the gifts of God, are given that they may be distributed or become instruments of help to others. 
Let me read a few more verses here from the New Living Translation out of 1 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Corinthians, first chapter. Paul the Apostle writes, For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, and isn't that so appropriate for our times? Got troubles? Got troubles? We should have a t-shirt that says that. Got troubles? Go to God and get comforted by God. Step two, take that comfort to others. That's God's plan for your life. Right now, right here in the middle of all this trouble, you see, Christians have so many things that cannot be locked down. You cannot lock down prayer. You cannot lock down love. And God now has given us so many avenues to be able to share his comfort and his love with others. Do it. Find a way. Write a letter. Do people still write letters? I don't <laughs> <laughs> Send a card. <laughs> Someone has written, as the hotter the day, the greater the dew at night, so too the hotter the time of troubles, the greater the dews of refreshing from God. And of course, we know that Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, here on earth, you will have many trials and troubles. One translation says tribulations. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. You want to pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this evening. And we thank you, Father, that we had this opportunity to, to gather together, to link spiritually, to have the unity that Jesus has given us so freely in the Father as we come together here over your word. Father, we lift up the president. We lift up the vice president. We lift up all those that are working on his task force, some really smart and notable people. And I pray, Father, that you would bless them all and give them wisdom. I pray, Father, that you would protect these from sickness. I pray, Father, for anybody who has caught this virus, if they're well, Lord, help them not to share it with others. If they're not well, Lord, I pray that you would heal them, Lord, and that they would come up with different drugs that will help, Father, in this. Lord, we seek your face. We call out on you. We desire your comfort, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as you call out, Lord, that perhaps there's some prodigals out there that have wandered away from you and now see how much they need you. Oh, Father, I pray that there would be recommitments to you even right now. I pray, Father, that people would call out to you and that, Lord, they would find your comfort and your peace through Jesus Christ. Lord, you are good, and we praise you. And we pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we love you. Anything else we want to share? Uh, we'll see him again on, when, on Sunday. Sunday, we're going to have another... Uh, four o'clock. Four o'clock. You can come back over to my house <laughs> via the internet. And uh, we've been working on the lighting and things like that. And I hope that that's... I hope it's getting better. So anyway, I love you. And uh, I'll see you soon. Uh, in Jesus' name. <laughs>